Hey guys, my name is Josh from the channel Sharpshooter JD, and welcome back to another video. Today I will be attempting to make a swage block, a wooden swage block, um, for dishing steel. So I'm going to be trying to make some spoons or ladles, maybe some bowls eventually, and uh, this seems to be the easiest way to go about it. Um, so I'm going to give it a shot. I saw a video by um, Christ Center Ironworks who uh, does a tutorial on how to make these swage blocks. It's super helpful. I'll have a link in the description uh, to that if you guys want to check it out. And uh, yeah, he just uh, draws a circle. I used a, uh, I think it was a wine glass to trace out this circle, um, but you can also use um, one of those tools uh, to draw a circle of any size. Um, this just worked for me. And he just uses a angle grinder with a flap disc to shape the hollowed out portion. And uh, I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, just like he did, and I'll be using a uh, 36 grit flap disc for this. It is made for metal, so we'll see if it works. It should work. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be giving it a shot today, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. All right, there we go. Um, just got the first kind of layer taken off. This is actually working better than I thought it would. But uh, I gotta go get a respirator really quick because the dust is getting to me. All right, I got my respirator. Let's uh, get back to work. Make sure you stay tuned until later on in the video when I talk about the success I've had with this swage block and the tweaks I've made to it as I've used it. There's a ton of great information there, so you don't want to miss it. Well, I think that's a pretty good start. I'm gonna um, burn it now, and then uh, we'll see if I can Hammer it down a little bit more, get the shape more how I want it. I have heard this charring can increase the durability of the block, especially if used with hot steel, but I'm not sure how effective it would be on this soft piece of lumber. I'll talk about this more later. The hammering didn't really help much to be honest. I would probably skip over this step if I did it again. So now I'm just going to give the switch block a quick test with some random piece of plate steel I had laying around. Sure, it's not round, but it's all I got, so I'm gonna give it a try. There it is, kind of rough shaped, and I figured it'd be a little easier if I cut off the corners to make it slightly more round than it was before. Probably should have done that in the first place. I'm probably not doing this correctly, but hey, it's the first one I've ever done. It actually dished quite nicely. Not too bad for a first attempt. Definitely some improvements to be made though. Alrighty guys, so it's been about a week or two since the clip you just watched, and I've been making some tweaks to the block as I've been attempting to make some steel bowls with it. And I have a few changes that I've made that I want to go over really quick. And the first one is simply, I got rid of the charred finish. Um, I didn't see any reason to have it. The only reason I did it was because I had seen other people doing it, but I think the only purpose for that is if you're working with um, hot metal. Um, I do everything cold for the project that I'm doing, 
so I saw no increase in durability to it when I did the charred finish and honestly when I charred the surface it created a bunch of high spots and it kind of burnt away parts of the grain and I'm sure I did it completely wrong and did it way too much but um, that was my experience it uh, it created more problems than it helped um, if you're using hot metal of course the hot metal will burn the wood and so if it's already burned I think it uh, helps keep it from getting lit on fire um, that would be my guess I don't really know um, but that's just the experience I had. So I did away with the um, charred finish. And the second thing I did was I just made it deeper. It wasn't near deep enough. I didn't spend near enough time on it. Um, so over the past week or two, I've just been making it deeper and deeper and deeper as I've been working on these bowls. Um, they just weren't turning out deep enough. And so I just made the switch block deeper and now everything's working great. So I'll show you here. You saw in the original clip that it really wasn't very deep. It was pretty shallow. Um, so now it is almost the same um, depth as the flap disc itself. So that's the depth I got it to, just as a quick reference. These are four and a half inch discs um, and holding at about a 45 degree angle, this disc sits in here just perfectly. So this is working perfectly for me at this depth. And I'm sorry for not filming that part of it. I was just going back and forth between working on the bowls and uh, deepening the swage block. I did it like four different times until I found the depth I wanted. So, so it just didn't work out to film that part. Uh, so sorry about that. But it's working great for me right now and I was able to make this um, mild steel bowl. I did it cold and I got it to about an inch um, deep, which is where I needed it for the project I'm doing. As you can see, there's a little splintering on the edge because I'm kind of pushing the boundaries of this um, six by six block, but I'm sure if you used a bigger block or if you got something a little bit higher quality than this, it's either pine or fir, it's just a six by six piece of lumber um, that uh, you wouldn't have that issue. I have a feeling that a railroad tie would work pretty good, but I'm not hundred percent sure. You can also use a log, um, pretty much anything will work. This is just what I had laying around, so it's what I used. And um, I just have it mounted here to a little portable uh, workstation, a little portable work table that kind of, that folds out and um, I just screwed up through the bottom into it and it's nice and solid on there. Before I tried to do it on the floor and that was terrible. I was, it was bouncing around all over the place. So don't do that. Make a stand or something for it. There's all kinds of simple stands you can make or you can just bolt it down or screw it down to uh, your work table um, like this and that works great as well. So yeah, I think that is all the changes I made and uh, I'd highly recommend giving this a try guys if you're in the market for a switch block. Um, commercial ones are like, go for like $300, something crazy like that. Um, and uh, you might be able to get away with something like this if the project's pretty simple. And um, all in all, I'm super impressed with this. Uh, it's a great way to get started um, in dishing steel and uh, super cheap as well. It takes a little bit of time, but honestly, for not really having to spend any money on it, it's a great time investment. And uh, yeah, so give it a try. If you guys have any questions, um, please leave them down below. I'm not like super knowledgeable on this subject, but um, maybe I can help you out a little bit. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave me a like or a comment down below. And if this is your first time here, make sure you check out my channel. I have over a hundred awesome videos on various topics, uh, mainly focusing on metalworking and primitive homemade weapons. Um, I'm pretty confident you guys will find something you like on there. And if you do, please consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you get notified of each new video I post. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.